creating habits and falling in love with the process and divorcing yourself from the results is going to be life changing when it comes to your health. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking all about my health story, um, and it's going to be separated into two parts. And then next week, we're going to get into the four pillars of health. Um, and I'm really excited to dive into this. And, and if you don't know, March is National Nutrition Month. Um, this month was made for me. I love talking about nutrition uh, because I used to be the girl who didn't think twice about anything that I ate. Um, and you know, I, I mean, I ate out and, um, when I started my health and wellness business, my mother-in-law actually, she looked at me and laughed and she said, you in health and wellness, like, are you serious? Um, and she wasn't wrong. I mean, I, again, I remember one time talking to my stepmom and she made chicken sausage for dinner. And I was like, this is super weird, crunchy, like weirdo stuff. Like, why aren't we having regular sausage? Like <laughs> I was not into health and wellness. Um, so I'm going to start my story today, um, with, I, I didn't really grow up around exercise, like structured exercise. We lived on a farm, as you heard, if you, if you don't know about my growing up story, you can go back and you can listen to the very first episode, um, in the true wellness podcast that aired just earlier this year. And, um, you know, so we were always outside, so we didn't have structured exercise. We were just always outside running around and playing. Um, and so I didn't really learn about structured exercise until I was probably in junior high. Um, and I saw my stepmom doing yoga and like, I would start to do somewhat of that with her. Um, but that was essentially it. And then as I played sports, you know, for sports, we would have structured exercise in our practices. Um, and then going into high school, you know, it was more of like, um, having this awareness of, my body and that I wanted to be able to perform well in the sports that I was doing. My husband is a naturally gifted athlete. I am the have to work and practice really hard. Doesn't come naturally to me athlete. <laughs> um, I played lots of different sports and I wasn't the greatest at any of them, but I also wasn't the worst. I was just okay. Um, I wasn't super competitive either. I really just enjoyed having the community and having fun, but I did have a love hate with the exercise portion of it. <laughs> um, you know, they were really hard, but I've always been a natural born encourager. So that's where I found my strength. Um, and my focus for working out was encouraging those around me to keep going, to keep pushing, to keep trying, because we were doing this so that we could perform better in our games. Um, and so this kind of mindset around exercise of like just having to do it in order to do the things that I wanted to do kind of carried through, um, you know, and I think I, I, I developed this, um, mindset of intensity. Like it has to be intense. It has to be structured. It has to be, you know, like every single day. Um, and so what happened was I developed this all or nothing mentality. Like I would make these whole elaborate workout plans, right? Like from a magazine or like, um, a YouTube video or something. And like, I, I would set up this whole schedule where like I was exercising at least like an hour a day and guess what? <laughs> I burned out after like a week. And so I was never consistent enough to see any results. Um, and you know, this continued into, um, college. Like I would have bouts of working out, but I wasn't focused on what I was eating at all. Um, honestly, I don't even know why I was working out. I guess at the time it was so that I at least wouldn't get fat. That was my thinking at the time. So, uh, but I did, I actually gained quite a bit of weight in college. Um, I lived at home my first year, so it wasn't my first year. I was still, you know, eating normal, like I had always eaten. Um, but my second year of college what you know, I was in a serious relationship. My now husband and I were, um, exclusively dating each other and we were engaged a year later um you know so we were comfortable and you know we were eating in the food court and eating out all the time and just eating like you know how it is in college like pizza all the time I love pizza but not all the time <laughs> um and you know so I gained weight in college and in those early years of marriage and then we started having kids we had three kids in three years and um it did a serious number on my health. 
um, leaving me depleted of nutrients, exhausted, um, unable to lose the weight, unbalanced hormones, brain fog, all the things. <laughs> um, and so I really moved into this pattern of restricting my food because I was told, you know, eat less and move more. And so I leaned into my obsessive working out um, and I was never consistent with anything again because I would burn out and then I would just try to eat less um, and I wasn't prioritizing my health in a healthy way. It wasn't healthy in building a foundation of, you know, falling in love with the habits because it's who the person that I wanted to be instead of just having to do the thing to avoid being something, right? Like there's a totally different mindset when you look at those from two different ways. Um, and so, you know, what I, what I learned because I hired a coach, um, you know, I kind of had limped along for a few years and, you know, after having three kids in three years, um, and then, you know, I had a friend share with me the, the importance of having a good supplement. I mean, I was already taking them, but it wasn't making a difference. I switched. That was really the catalyst for me changing my whole story, my whole wellness journey. That was where I was like going along the road this way. And all of a sudden I went like <laughs> in a good, better direction um, in so many different ways. Um, my health improved. Uh, and, and like, and that was really just a starting point of getting excited about health because I like solutions, right? I, I mean, I think, I think people like solutions, most people, right? Like we like it when we find something that works and that can be the foundation and we can continue building on that first thing when we keep doing it consistently because it's something sustainable that we can keep doing. It's not something, you know, crazy or overwhelming that we're going to burn out on or get sick of, right? Um, and so, when I hired a coach, she was able to help me to see this pattern I was having of restrict, 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 right? Like eating healthy, eating more salads, right? And then starving and going into binge mode. And then, you know, so it's like, I'd have like these super low calorie days. And then I'd have this like crazy off the charts, like 5,000 calorie day. And then I would feel shame for what I had done. And I would go back into restricting. But the problem was I wasn't giving my body enough calories to function well, and so no willpower in the world was going to allow me to continue that pattern. Um, and so being able to see that and being able to move past that was huge for me. And then when it came to exercise, I was, she, she really helped me with, um, you know, I will, I will link her program in um, the notes of this episode because she has a great program. She really starts foundationally. Um, and helps to not fight against your body, but to help uh, repair imbalances like in muscles and structure and different things like that. And to build a solid foundation, again, having a good foundation that you can build off of, right? Um, and so through these 30 to 40 minute workouts a day, I was able to um, fall in love with the process, right? Like to, to establish the habit and not burn out. Um, because they were workouts I enjoyed. Um, they were workouts that I was, you know, starting to see results for paired with healthy eating habits, right? And a healthy relationship with food. And it wasn't eating less. It was actually eating more than I'd ever eaten in my life, but doing it consistently. <laughs> um, and so then I didn't have these like restrictive patterns and then binging and like all over the place. Like my body it was crazy. The craziest thing when I switched my eating patterns to eating more was that all of a sudden my brain wasn't obsessing about food all day long. I, I was able to stop thinking about it all the time. Like I was so hungry and so restricted all the time that I couldn't stop thinking about food. When I was eating, I was thinking about my next meal. Like I was never satisfied. Um, and I just felt like I was weak. Like there was something wrong with me. Like you know, why am I always obsessing about food? Why am I always hungry? Because I wasn't eating enough. Um, and so that paired with, with falling in love with this habit of exercising and be able to do it consistently, both of those, like the fat started coming off <laughs> and I started feeling better and having even more energy. Cause again, I'm building these habits on top of that solid foundation of replenishing all of the nutrients that had been severely depleted from three preg pregnancies in three years and not having um, any sort of adequate diet <laughs> that supported my body uh, in any way. 
And so I was able to build on top of that, you know, and add these healthy eating habits and add the, you know, this healthy love for exercise as a celebration of what my body can do as a way to get stronger, to build my lean muscle rather than some kind of like punishment for how I ate or um, trying to kill myself. Like one thing I really learned is that your energy, your workout should energize you, not leave you completely. Ugh. Oh, we paused here. So it looks like we're screen is frozen, but Hey, we'll be back. I'm sure you can still hear me and it's totally fine. So I think the biggest thing to understand here is that I did very simple things and that is the key to my wellness journey when it comes to exercise and eating. It was really about this habit focus and making sure that I was eating more and I was actually working out less, but I was able to do it consistently. And also I focused on recovery. So in working out less, I was doing more intense workouts that were challenging my body, but then I was giving my body adequate time and adequate protein to rebuild those muscle tears. Because that's what happens when we exercise is we tear our muscles and then our muscles have to repair. And through that repair process is what makes them stronger. And if you're not getting enough protein, which most people aren't, especially women, your body doesn't have what it needs. And if you're not getting enough sleep, your body doesn't have the time to be able to repair all the damages done. And so this leads to elevated cortisol levels. This leads to all sorts of issues that actually works against us when it comes to crafting and building this healthy lifestyle and honestly, just feeling our best overall. Um, and so a few things I wanted to share here that really worked well for me were prioritizing plenty of protein was the biggest. So I started eating more. Yes, my calories went up to match what I needed for every day. But most of that was protein because protein are the basic building blocks, blocks in our bodies and what our lean muscle is made of. And our lean muscle, I can't wait. Like protein, oh, I get so jazzed about sharing about protein because it's so amazing for our bodies, especially as women, as we age, like our muscles start to go away as we age. Like every decade, we're losing three to 8% after the age of 30. Um, and so it's really important for us to be able to, to prioritize plenty of protein because it helps us feel full, be more satisfied, but also to give our bodies what it needs so that it can help to build and maintain lean muscle, which impacts so many things from hormonal balances to metabolism, to blood glucose sugar levels, um, with, I mean, so often we see, you know, insulin resistance beginning and so much of that can be reduced by having more lean muscle because our lean muscles help our bodies to uptake that glucose and to help our pancreas not to need to produce as much insulin because they're taking over some of that work, which is really awesome. It helps us to maintain blood sugar levels. So cool. So prioritizing protein is one of the biggest things that I did for myself and that I continue to do that has been so helpful. And I get so excited about protein because it can make such a huge difference. I will dedicate a whole episode sometime here, maybe this month. I'm not sure yet, but it's going to squeeze itself in here because protein just jazzes me the heck up. Okay. So then the second one is rest and sleep, prioritizing this as women, we need more sleep than men. We just do. Um, I just learned I was having conversations with my husband because we were talk teaching our kids about how sleep is really important and our kids don't like to sleep, but we were, we were teaching them that it really is. And there's a reason why we make our kids go to bed at eight o'clock every single night and why I still make my two littles now, which I didn't do this for my first three. And I wish I really would have enforced those naps when they were little, but I didn't. But now I do. So my five-year-old, or she's four, she'll be five soon. She still takes a nap. Um, but anyways, we were we were debating on how many hours of sleep <laughs> men and women need. Um, because I say women need eight to nine hours of sleep. And he was saying men can get by on six. And I was like, that seems too low. So really what we found out is men really need like seven to eight and women need like eight to nine. Um, and I guess women only need maybe like 40 more minutes of sleep, according to some studies. I'm not sure I agree with them, but that's just me. But this is because women use more of this part of our brain and we need that extra sleep in order to be able 
um, to repair and, you know, get back to normal. Anyway, um, so prioritizing rest and sleep is just so important. Resting our muscles, giving them adequate time to repair themselves, but then also, you know, help like doing foam rolling to help roll out any kind of like adhesions and those kinds of things um, paired with like stretching and gentle yoga to help make sure that we're not um, creating any environments of muscle imbalances where we have certain overactive muscles and certain underactive muscles that are weak, you know, really focusing on those things. And then that sleep so that we have that restorative, deep, good sleep. There are so many things I'm going to be sharing about this next week with the four pillars, um, with how to get better sleep to how to fall asleep better, faster, how to stay asleep and how to wake up feeling rested and energized. Um, the next one is focusing on resistance training. So weight bearing exercise as women, this is so important because our bone density is directly linked to weight bearing exercise with the partnership of protein. <laughs> so those two go hand in hand. Um, and as you know, as women, as we age, our bones tend to get more brittle and, you know, we're more prone to osteoporosis and those kinds of things. So this is one thing that is super important for us as women that we need to be doing. The next one is shifting to hit and just moving more throughout your day outside, like, like outside of structured exercise, just moving more, um, you know, going on walks, taking the stairs, parking farther away, those kinds of things. Like they all add up, you know, you don't have to have structured cardio every single week. If you're going hiking on the weekend, you know, or you know, you're taking a daily walk. Um, we only need 75 minutes of vigorous cardio to 150 of moderate a week, just to get our heart rate up to improve our cardiovascular system. But when we're engaging in extensive cardio, like we're hitting the treadmill, we're, you know, doing the elliptical for an hour, like we are causing our cortisol levels to stay raised and it does more harm than it does good. And we are so much better off by doing some sort of hit exercise, which is just high intensity interval training so that we're pushing hard for a shorter amount of time. Um, and so we're not stressing our body out and keeping those levels of cortisol elevated, but we're also pairing it with muscle bearing um, <clears throat> or uh, weight bearing resistance training. And so we're helping to support the uh, development and growth of lean muscle mass. And we as women don't have to worry about bulking up because we don't have the testosterone in order to be able to do that, okay? Um, and then the last, actually one bonus thing is I would encourage you to go to a chiropractor if you haven't, um, because what I found out, I felt like I was fighting against my body. Some of that was due to muscle imbalances and postural corrections that needed to be made in made. <laughs> do you ever do that? Like, I don't know if it's just because I have little kids and sometimes, you know, they say the wrong, uh, tense of verbs, but sometimes I do too. And I don't know if it's just because I have kids or sometimes my brain just goes way too, my mouth goes faster than my brain, I guess. Um, so I get excited anyway. So going to the chiropractor, uh, can be really helpful to help your body to get back into alignment when you're pairing it with strengthening weak elongated muscles and helping to lengthen um, overactive muscles. And this really helps with structure, helps, you know, stabilizing our core and having core muscle endurance, um, you know, different things like that. And, um, okay. Oops, sorry, I had a call coming in. <laughs> I don't know if you can still hear me. I hope you can still hear me. We'll see here, I wanna check. Check and make sure that you can hear me properly. Okay. All right. Anyway, so that was the last one. Was that bonus one? Is that Cairo? And then the very last thing I want to leave you with here is to focus on who not results, to focus on the process of these things, taking it one day at a time, showing up and doing the things, whether you want to or not, because you're focused on the way that it makes you feel, not just how you feel in that moment. We never really feel like, you know, eating more protein in a day or, you know, doing our workout or taking time to rest and recover, right. Or going to bed earlier instead of watching our favorite show. Like, 
we don't feel like doing these things, but when we shift to following love with the process and showing up to consistently do those day after day, that's what leads to the big results in our life. The results that we have in our life right now is because of the things we've done consistently, whether intentionally or usually it's just a fact of the easiest thing for us, right? Like whatever is easy that, you know, and that's the results that we have. And so if we can just shift that to focus on doing those little things every day that are intentional, they will lead to those big results. Hey, hey, buddy. Um, that will lead to the big results in our life over time. Okay, I'll change your button just a second. Um, <clears throat> you know, and so just focusing on that, like, who do we want to become? Like, how, I, I like to think of it as like, what is the grandma that I want to be someday, right? Like, do I want to be able to play with my grandkids and run around with them? Or do I want to have to sit on the sidelines because my body is breaking down? Like, you know, and just asking yourself, like, what kind of wife do I want to be someday when we're retired and, um, you know, traveling and exploring and doing all those things? Like, do I want to have to like be using a walker or do I want to be like running around and, you know, working out because, you know, I'm like getting strong and still and fit because I fell in love with that process and it's just who I am, right? So just getting clear and asking yourselves those questions, because that's really important because by default, we are going to be weak and inactive and overweight and not have a healthy relationship with food. That's just who we are as people. Um, the good results that we want in our life do not happen by default. They happen with intentional discipline and through discipline brings true freedom. It really does. And that through that process, we experience true wellness. And true wellness is simply a multifaceted uh, wheelhouse of the things that make us feel our best and get to show up for our best in our life. So next week, we're going to be talking about part two of this, and it's going to be the four pillars of health. Health. I'm going to dive much deeper into those, um, the whys, the information behind it, uh, simple tips of how you can implement those into your life. Um, to help you start building that solid foundation of health for yourself and true wellness. Take care, my friends.